Venerable Joy will spend 10 years in Sea Lai Temple, USA, prior to her current assignment. Venerable Joy holds a PhD from the University of the West in USA, a Master's of Arts in the Buddhist Studies from Tongling Buddhist College in Taiwan. She is also the author of Buddha's Birthday Education Project, Through These Doors, Connecting Past and Present, East and West. So tonight, we are very glad to have Venerable Dr. Joy Wei here to give a talk on 10 Keys to Happiness. Thank you. A very good evening to you. I must say, the 11th key to happiness is to be home. I was back about 3 p.m. today, and from 3 to now for the past five hours, I was just steeped in joy. So good to see so many familiar faces and some new ones as well. And just going around to this temple from the basement, B2, B1, level 1, 2, 3, 4, just going through all the familiar, just the familiar grounds, and at the same time seeing all the new things in every corner. This is a place that feels like a home, and it is our home. And to be all fortunate, We are grateful to all the conditions, to Master Xing Yun, to all the venerables, the hardworking BLIA members, all the Foguang Buddhists and volunteers to make this our home. Where else should we go? Where else do we need to go? But to always come back to our home of happiness. Today, in case you're thinking that I'm going to go from slide to slide, just um, creating opportunities for you to laugh, I'm afraid it's not. I'm not planning to stand up here to be a stand-up comic. Instead, I'm hoping that through this evening and tomorrow evening, we can create for ourselves the grounds for us to keep thinking about what it means for us to be happy and how the Buddha has taught us and how Master Xing Yun has interpreted the teachings of the Buddha for us to consider what it really means to be happy. And because it will require us to do a fair bit of thinking, I would like to invite everyone to begin by checking in. Those of you who have been here last year or in my previous talks would probably be familiar. And I don't know if you have been doing it for the past year since I was here. Checking in. When do you check in? When do you check in? When you go to a hotel, right? You check in. What does that mean? You, you book yourself into the hotel and you check yourself and say, uh-huh, so I pause. This is now my new room, my new home. So that's checking in. And so it's the same with us. Today, we've had a busy day. We've all had a busy week. I mean, here in Singapore and here being Fokwang Buddhist, I'm sure you have not been idle. So... All that, let's put that aside and check in to the moment. And all it takes is just one minute for us to cast aside wherever we've been, whatever we've done, to check in to the moment. And so if you'll join me, just relax in your seat and sit upright. So let's sit upright in our chairs. We are in a very safe home. So let's close our eyes. And relax. 
from the top of our head. Let's relax our forehead, our eyes, facial muscles, our neck muscles. Relax our shoulders, forearms, lower arms, and our hands. Our hard working fingers. Relax. Relax our spine. Vertebra by vertebra. Feel our back muscles relaxing. Our thigh muscles, lower calf muscles, let them go. Our feet and our toes, relax. As we scan the body, note any areas of tension and let them go. As our body relaxes into the moment, into the seat, into the ground, let's bring our attention to the tip of our nose and notice our breathing. Notice our in-breath and our out breath. Let's observe without judging and without control. Let's just watch our breath for one minute. Checking in. It allows us an opportunity to appreciate the very conditions of the moment. And with this deep sense of appreciation and gratitude, let's gently open our eyes and return to the main shrine of Fo Kuang Shan, Singapore, our beautiful home. How do you feel? Calm and peaceful? Checking in, I call it my first aid. Did you know that between a stimulus and our reaction to it. We have a 90 second buffer. It takes 90 seconds for us to respond and for us to select our response. By just breathing and pausing for one minute, 
it gives us an opportunity to check any negative impulses. It gives us an opportunity to check ourselves from thinking, saying, and doing anything that may have a negative impact. So this check-in exercise not only allows us to put aside the past and come into the moment, but it's also our first aid when we are being perturbed. And that's my secret to happiness. It gives me an opportunity to enter a space and time and appreciate the conditions. So, if you have to run into a meeting, go there at least one minute earlier. So you have a minute to check in. If you're standing in queue, waiting for your turn to pay for your groceries, Again, that allows me an opportunity to check in. I'm driving at the red light. Grand opportunity for checking in. And if you develop this habit enough so that it becomes a very natural part of me, there will be less tendency for you to say, I couldn't help my reaction. I can't help being angry. I can't help saying what I say. Not if you are able to check in. Okay? So if you come back tomorrow at um, 8 p.m., we'll have another check in exercise. The 10 keys to happiness. What might they be? Let's see what happiness really means to you. Can anybody shout, what is happiness to you? How do you, what will constitute happiness to you? Hmm? Okay, we'll start with Wei Xin. Oh, you have the microphone. Sleep. Sorry? Sleep is happiness to me. Sleep. Sleep. Somebody is sleep deprived. Yes, very sleep deprived. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Having good sleep. And you know that um, I was looking at Mr. Lee Kuan Yew's um, the tribute to him, and, and he said that he could live for so long because he had enough sleep and exercise. So longevity to you. <laughs> Anybody else? What's happiness to you? Anybody wants to? Are you ever happy? Are you ever happy? So what are those conditions that constitute that happiness? Anybody wants to share? Anybody? Sorry? Peace of mind. This is very important. That inner peace that's in us. And what is learning Buddhism? It's to help us work on our mind so that it can be happy and peaceful. Well, there is an um, institute called the um, happinessinternational.org and they differentiate between happiness and pleasure. Pleasure. A lot of times we're looking at happiness but actually we think we are happy but I just pleasurable moments because that sense of pleasure comes through our senses, right? We eat chocolate. Haven't you heard that chocolate can give you happiness? It does, doesn't it? Some people, when they are sad, mm, take lots of sweets. Children love sweets. It gives them a sense of happiness. But happiness is different. When we, when we say have fun at a party, that's happiness to many people. Lots of people love to travel, right? 
Travel gives people happiness because they see new things. But again, this comes from what? Our sense organs. Look at this Coke bottle. It says Coke creates happiness. Open a can of Coke. You know why? They have a secret formula in there. The, the, you know the Coke formula? They will not let out the secret formula. But there's something addictive about it. I know many Americans and Australians who have to drink Coke every day. Just recently, I held a forum, and we were just last Saturday. We held a forum, and on that forum, we were talking about mindful consumerism. Mindful consumerism. I thought of that very, um, let's say, oxymoron topic. So mindful consumerism, and one of our speakers is the CEO of a non-profit company who works with youths, and he said every day he must have at least two cans of Coke because that makes him happy. <laughs> so much about mindful consumerism is mindfully aware of what makes him happy. But see, the problem with such experiences, such pleasurable experiences, is that it comes and it goes. What, after you've finished your can of Coke, after you've finished your, your one round of travel, you want the next, and you want the next. And what's worse is that it will take more and more Coke to make you happy, more and more chocolates to make you happy, because it's the way our brain works. It goes through homeostasis. The more you feed it something, the more it gets what, used to it. Then you need a higher level and a higher level. So addiction is like, it's equivalent to taking drugs, smoking cigarettes, taking alcohol, because we get addicted to that sense. And so it takes more to feel that sense. So that's pleasure. So not that it's not good, but you have to be aware. We have to be aware of what is pleasure and what really then is happiness. Happiness is when we fulfill our needs. Now, it didn't say fulfill our wants, but our needs. When we have a sense of contentment, it's a zhi zu chang le, right? Knowing contentment, and we will always be happy. And what is perfect happiness is enlightenment. Look, this is not a Buddhist group. This is internationalhappiness.org. And even a non-Buddhist group knows, and they have done their scientific study, of what constitutes real happiness. It is really enlightenment. When all your needs are satisfied and we are contented. We are living in a balanced state. So, now let's look at the Buddhist definition of happiness and what we do. Among the Mahayana Sutras, okay, we, we, humanistic Buddhism, it belongs to Mahayana Buddhism, the great vehicle. Among them, one of the large collection of sutra is called the Great Treasures Collection Sutra, Da Bao Ji Jing. In the Great Treasures Collection Sutras, the Buddha spoke to 49 different assemblies. So, in there, there are 49 different stories. And they are very big stories. But the 30th assembly, Sumati, a young girl, was the main actress. Sumati Sutra. Sunmati Sutra is Miao Hui Tong Nu Jing. Miao Hui Tong Nu. Sumati Bodhisattva is only eight years old when she's the daughter of a Brahmin elder and she was so beautiful and smart. But she loved to listen to wise teachings because she herself is very wise. 
So one day, when the Buddha came to where she stays in Rajagraha, Wang She Cheng, in Rajagraha, she came forward to the Buddha and asked him questions to help her reach enlightenment. Now, this is an eight-year-old girl. So first of all, youth. Does it matter if you are young or old? You can be wise. Does it matter whether you are men or women? No. So Buddhism stresses equality. And the same with Master Xing Yun, isn't it? Master Xing Yun makes it possible for so many women to become Buddhist nuns. He made it possible also for young and old to participate in the Foguang Buddhist family. So never look down on anybody, young or old, whether they've just started Buddhism or whether they've been here for many, many years, whether you're a lay person or a monastic. Every one of us has the Buddha nature. So all of us have the potential to be enlightened, to be happy. So the Sumati Sutra now has been interpreted in its modern form into Master's Ten Paths to Happiness, 十种幸福之道. Both books are available for sale today, and I hope I can convince you that this is really a book very much worth reading. Why is that so? Because it's all about life today. We as four Guang Buddhists, we are all bodhisattvas. How shall we walk this path of bodhisattva? And so, Sumati, this eight-year-old girl, asked Buddha ten questions that are both about the worldly aspects and the transcendental, supramundane aspects. And the questions that she asks are all very relevant to us. What does she ask? She asked, how does one attain an elegant and proper appearance? In other words, how can we be beautiful? Beauty. Do we all want beauty? Don't we all want to look dignified in appearance? Right? That's why we spend so much time in front of the mirror. Every day when we wake up, we make sure we spend some time before the mirror. And why we also have our wardrobe nicely dressed so that we all look really dignified. So proper appearance. Second, how does one attain wealth and nobility? Wealth. Wealth can also give us happiness because we don't have to worry. We don't have to worry, mm, where's my food? Will I have food on the table? Will I have a roof over my head? Wealth. Third, how does one protect one's family from destruction? How can I have harmony within the family. That's important, isn't it? We want to go home and experience love in the family. We want togetherness, harmony. That can give us happiness. But beyond that, as a Buddhist, how can one be reborn in the presence of a Buddha? Don't we all wish that at the end of our life, that the Buddha will appear before us and lead us onto our next life, into a very peaceful, pure land. Five, how can one attain supernatural powers and able to travel anywhere? The freedom of travel. In the Amitabha Sutra, we know that what the beings 
all the beings in the Western Pure Land can go from Pure Land to Pure Land to pay respects to the Buddha and then return when it's time to eat, return home and have food. Isn't that equivalent to having a passport that can go everywhere? You know, Singapore passport is excellent. I won't give it up. I can go anywhere. We are so blessed that we have that freedom to travel and enter any country we want. But the fact that we can enter a country, are all the doors open to us? So that when I come back here to Singapore for Guangshan, I feel welcome. And I go to any other for Guangshan temples, I still feel welcome. Why? For you, you wear your BLIA vest. For me, I wear my robes. I will feel welcome. So we have that ability to freely travel and doors are open to us. Six, how can one live blamelessly so that whatever we do, we don't have a sense of guilt? We can be fr conscience free. So how do we live such a life so that we can be happy? How can one ensure that others will trust what one says? Trustworthiness. Integrity is actually our second name. When people ask us, what's your name? Okay, I say I'm Jue Wei. You know, immediately, they will form a certain impression, right? And we hope people will think of us as being honest, as being a trustworthy person. Next, she asked, how can one eliminate obstruction to practicing the Dharma? Obstruction. I want to come to the temple, but unfortunately, I have to do so many other things. I have so many other commitments, and I can't come. Or, I want to practice, but unfortunately, they've got so many strings attached and I'm unable to. Or even falling ill prevents me from just sitting upright to be able to chant or to prostrate. All these obstructions to practice, how can I eliminate them? Isn't that important? How can one avoid Mara? If you know the Buddha's story, before the Buddha became the Buddha, the Prince Siddhartha became Buddha, he had to have one major battle. He had to have the battle with Mara, the evil one. It's the same with us. Small Maras, big Maras come to look for us every now and then. Sometimes they call it Murphy's Laws. <laughs> but a lot of times, Mara stops us. And the Mara could be internal, it could be external. The greed and anger and the wrong views, these are Maras. Sometimes they are so tempted. All the external temptations. I know I'm not supposed to have that chocolate. But it's Godiva. I cannot resist. That's Mara. Ten. How can one be greeted by Buddha upon death, hear the Dharma, and be free from suffering? Not only at the end of our lives, but really every day. Every day, tonight, when I go to bed. When I go to bed. How do I go to bed? Do I chant the Buddha's name so that the Buddha appears before me? So that I can sleep feeling so comforted by the Buddha. And knowing that I will be dreaming the, the talks tonight. That my dreams are actually filled with Dharma, all the goodness. And when I wake up, I'm going to wake up again with the Buddha and the Dharma. Wouldn't that be beautiful? If every night, that's how we end our hard-working day. So are these 10 questions that you feel useful? Yes? Well, if it is, then 
I have prepared 10 keys. And I would like two volunteers. These two volunteers, you have to be rather healthy and you love to run. You'll be standing up here and I will be saying, let's say for example, my first envelope here is about the first question, beauty. To each of these questions, the Buddha has four responses. And I have put the four responses in this envelope. The envelope is not sealed. When as I read out each envelope, and you think you really want to know what is that key to happiness, please raise your hand. And whoever's standing up here will find out who the first person to raise their hand is. It'll be very fast. Then you'll have an opportunity to get this envelope, open it, and out of the four pieces of paper, choose one. Okay, don't be greedy. Just choose one that you think is most relevant to you. You get an opportunity to read it out and we'll get an opportunity to discuss it together. Today, we do five keys. Tomorrow, we do another five keys. How does that sound? All right. But now, first of all, I want to tell you that these envelopes are unsealed. So please don't tear my envelope because that's what happened. Some of these envelopes bear the scars of very excited <laughs> listeners who tore it apart. And second, these are my props. <laughs> so I still need them. So whatever, whatever piece of paper you took, if you really like it, just take a picture of it, but return me my envelopes and all the props so I can still use them for my next stop. <laughs> all right, so two volunteers who will be my runners who will be up here to be able to identify the pe first person to raise your hand. And we'll continue this for about half an hour. So if there's more time, you can always go back second round. So don't be disappointed in whatever is said. Don't worry, even if, it, even if you're not the one who got the envelope, I'm sure the answers that we discussed will be relevant. So, well, may I have two runners, please? Two persons who are willing to help me? Yes? Okay, if you just stand here and you just see, okay, who are, who's, um, help me see who raised, who raised the hand first. All right, number one, who would like to know about beauty? Beauty. Can you see who's the first to want to see? Nobody wants beauty. Okay, good. All right, you did fast. Who wants, okay, ready? Ready? Who wants wealth? Who wants wealth? Who wants wealth? Nobody wants to, oh, nobody wants to be rich here. Okay, who, um, Never mind, you can, you can come up. You can choose. Just give it a choose. Who wants harmony in family? Harmony in family. All right, over there. Great. Look at the girl. Young girl. Who wants rebirth in the Buddha land? Wow, great. And number five. Who wants the freedom of travel? Over there. Yes. Great. All right. Just choose one. Take the envelope. Choose one, one answer in there. Okay, let's go to number one. Beauty. Which one would you like? And can you give her the microphone so she could read it? Just choose any one and you can read that for us. Just read it. Just read it. That's all you need to do. Uh, tranquilly abide Just give me the number on top oh, as well. Um, 1.2. 1.2. Yeah. Yes, you can uh, read it. Tran tranquilly abide with great loving kindness. Thank you. Tranquilly abide with great loving kindness. Okay, first of all, beauty. How do we get beauty first tranquilly tranquilly means calmly abide 
Abide means stay. So it's like checking in. Okay, you check, you pause, be still. With, so you're staying with great loving kindness. So let's look at loving kindness. Do we all know what loving kindness is? To be kind, to be able to give to others, and that is to give others happiness. Great loving kindness, it gives all sentient beings. So it is not just one person, but to be able to give loving kindness to every being, whether they are my relatives or my or just strangers I meet anywhere. And to abide. Abide means at all times I stay with loving kindness. In Nantian Temple, one of our most popular activities is meditation retreats. It's always overbooked. Our meditation hall can take only 50, and every time it's more than 50. And we've come to find out why so many Australians, they're usually Australians, Caucasian Australians who come, why they come? They're actually coming to heal. To heal. We've all had scars and wounds in our lives. We've been through ups and downs in our lives. Difficult moments. Difficult people to deal with. And a lot of times, we feel helpless. We feel like the wounded one. And so, we need a moment of peace and tranquility. Meditation allows us to bring ourselves to the moment and re review, right? Review, relook at those conditions and then heal. But how do we heal? We heal with what we call metta meditation, loving kindness. Giving loving kindness to those wounds, to the soreness, to the departures of loved ones, to everyone. And if we are able to give loving kindness to people we care about, that's easy. And then to people who I come into contact with, then to strangers. And finally, to people who have hurt us. If we are able to do that, we will be able to change the attitudes of people towards us. And a step at a time, that change will also be reflected in our countenance. Abiding by loving kindness. That's what's so important. So if we find that we don't look very beautiful, just change our attitude. Give loving kindness to everyone. Thank you for selecting such a beautiful piece. And I hope that's also useful to everybody. You think so? Yes, let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. So, um, can we have the microphone on wealth? Well, the what is the number? It's 2.3. 2.3. Give joyfully, I think that the answer was given. Give. Give joyfully. Wealth. Very often, we think of wealth as having a lot of things, a lot of belongings within ourselves. Okay? Having. Having a lot, that gives us, that is wealth. But really, it is about giving. In Chinese, there's she ba, right? In order to get ba, we have to she, to give. So, cause and effect, wealth. If I want to have lots of wealth, I must first be able to give. 
So very likely the wealthy people in this lifetime have been great benefactors in their previous lives. So that's why they can be born into wealth. And wealth doesn't come with nothing. It comes with a lot of hard work. You, know, you have to earn your wealth. And giving. There are many ways to give. I can give with resentment. I give, I have no choice. Got to give. Because the person before me give, the person after me give. You know, it's like, um, what is it? San Shi Xi Nian or any of this Dharma service. Wow, everybody along, your, along the whole row, everybody has a, has a red packet. Mm, I also must give. Now, that kind of giving is very d different. It's not giving of no choice, you know, giving us you know, a safe, safe face. No. Giving has to be given from the fountain of energy, of joy that's in us. It has to come from inside. I really want to give. And you know when you give something and, and you get that, and you get that smile back from someone, don't you feel great? And I have to be grateful for the opportunity to give. Because it will make me feel rich. Look, when I first started in um, Shilai and Nantian, I always think, you know how University of the West and Nantian Institute I always, wherever I go, always tell people, 要钱没钱, 要人没人. It's, the, it's the situation whereby you got no money, no people, nothing. So that's, what, that's why bhikkhus and bhikkhunis are, you know, we are what? Beggars. So we are actually going out begging on our arms round, asking for people to come and donate towards this great cause of education. I can tell it's very easy for people to give to the Nepal earthquake. It's very difficult for people to give to NTI, Nantian Institute. During our um, Vesak, Buddha's birthday, we go to Darling Harbour every year. So this year, again, we're at Darling Harbour going on our arms round. On Saturday, in Darling Harbour, we were collecting arms for Nantian Institute. On Sunday, we were collecting arms on the Nepal earthquake. Guess which one was more, people were more forthcoming? The Nepal earthquake. Charity is easy. Education is really difficult. So initially, no very pious say, got to go and ask people for money. No money, no talk, right? No money, no institute. So we have to do all these fundraising activities. But later on, I've come, and Venerable um, Mankol, our chief abbess, she's very wise. She tells us, we ought, to be, we ought to consider this equally. That means we give everybody an opportunity to sow the seeds of merit. How many places will give an opportunity to contribute towards the building of the first Buddhist university built by Chinese in the world. We are not going to have many such opportunities. And when we are able to give to some good cause, it doesn't matter afterwards because the seeds of wisdom have been sown. And that's what's so critical. And that's what's so... That's, that's the opportunity. And we all have made that happen. I can tell you that besides Australia, Singapore, we ought to be very proud. I think we are one of the top, one of the top five ranking um, contributors towards Nantian Institute. So thank you very much. And you don't only contribute pe uh, money, you also contribute people. It's not just me. You know, Singaporeans, we've got, of course, uh, I, th I always consider Venerable Manko half, if not more than half a Singaporean. <laughs> then we've got Venerable Miao Yo, who helps with the construction. Venerable Jue Fang, who is, although with Nantian Temple, she's helping with the student recruitment aspects of Nantian Institute. 
And of course, we've got me teaching as well as doing administration work in Nantian Institute. So thank you so much for all your assistance. Joy. Joy comes from the gifts of many things. And it's not just money. It could be joy by giving people many other things, such as people who just need some words of advice, some words of comfort, spiritual comfort, teachings from career assistance, and most important, I think, is a smile. Just smiling. It's so beautiful. And if you keep smiling, wealth will definitely come to you because you will have many, many positive affinities. So, lots of wealth, hopefully, to you and also everyone else. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. So, number three. Who is number three? Where is number three? Harmony in the family. Can you please tell me your number, please? 3.3. 3.3, thank you. Yes, you may read it out. Protection and insurance of the continuation of the true Dharma. If you want harmony, thank you so much. If you want harmony in your family, and it's so beautiful to see this young girl here wishes for family harmony. Family means so much to us. And if we can... How do we ensure harmony? Buddhist teachings is actually about harmony. He is extremely important. It's important to Chinese. It's also important to Buddhists. So ensuring that the Dharma continues will help us with our relationships with people. If we want to be liberated, to be really enlightened, you know, light, not just in the form of light as in a lamp, but also lighter in terms of my burden, then we have to uphold the Dharma. Keep the Dharma with us. And there are many ways we can do so. We say, Chang Zhu San Bao. I often joke because, you know, I have what you call the wu yin bu quan, can sing. Can sing. I don't know my do, re, mi, fa, so, what happened to it, you know. I just, out of the window. But I also tell everybody, I cannot sing da cheng chang zu san bao, but I will do da cheng chang zu san bao. That's why I have a Buddhist birthday education project. The Buddhist birthday education project allows me every year during Vesak to remind people about the Buddha. Later, I'll show you our latest addition to the Buddha's Birthday Education Project. But then, besides San Pao, besides Fo, the next, the Er Pao is what? The Dharma, isn't it? The Dharma, I do many things. One of the things I've done and that I am um, coming back and I'm doing and I'm bringing here. Last year, for those of you who have been here, remember I gave Dharma cards, right? I had a pack of 52 Dharma cards. Well, this year I have Bodhi leaves. I have done Bodhi leaves with the Buddha sitting on top of a QR code. <laughs> this QR code, if you scan it with your iPhone or your Google Play, it will bring you to my paradeofthebuddhas.org website. But on the other side, I have 52 different sayings of the Master's Tai Gen Tan, Humble Table Wise Fair in two languages, English and Chinese, on a beautiful Buddha Bodhi leaf. And so tonight, everyone here, you can pick your Bodhi leaf. Dharma. So this is what... It means, I hope that this beautiful card is something you will keep. Master's sayings of the Dharma, practical for the moment. Humanistic Buddhism. In addition, I've also developed 
um, last December, I had a lotus, I organized a lotus carnival. And as part of the lotus carnival, I developed humanistic Buddhism Q and A cards. Each card contains beautiful pictures of the lotuses in Nantian Temple. How many of you have been to Nantian Temple? Raise your hands. Wow, quite a number. Thank you. And you would remember the lotus ponds? Every year during summer, which is December, around December, our lotuses will bloom beautifully. So last year, used that opportunity to develop these beautiful cards. On one side is a question, and on the other side is the master's answers using the latest, you know, 365 Days of Wisdom? Well, the 365 for travelers. Huh? This pack of cards is the first English version of the 365 days. Picked 52 of those sayings, and I put them here in Q&A form. And you can actually use it as a game because you can ask the questions, for example, what is love? One of the questions, and you can discuss among yourselves, and whoever gets it right, you turn over, there's the answers, you get the points. So you get one point, two points, three points, up to four points. So this is a way for you to be able to start playing games, and also memorizing these words of wisdom. So today, I've brought several packs of these cards in the back, and if you're willing to donate a little, whatever amount you wish, towards this beautiful cause of Nantian Institute, you will be able to not only acquire wealth in the future, but also be able to protect and ensure the continuation of the Dharma and bring towards harmony within the family. So here are opportunities for you tonight. They are all in the back. So if you are willing to just spare a few dollars and help sow the seeds of wisdom for Nantian Institute. Okay, number four. Who's number four? But round of applause for Harmony. Thank you. Number four, yes. what's four, the number? 4.4. 4. Yes. Yeah, develop a pure faith in the enlightenment of all Buddhas. Thank you. Birth in the Buddha land. Don't we all wish that we can have rebirths in the Buddha land, be it Amitabha Buddha, Medicine Buddha, and the best humanistic Buddha land, right here on earth, in this very moment. And in order to do that, we have to have faith. Faith is so important. Faith in a lot of things. In the past, we often say, have faith, xin ma, yi xin ru men. In order to have faith, then we practice. But today, people can't, people say, no, give me the evidence first. The good news is this Buddhism, the Buddha's teachings, is what's natural around us. The Buddha did not create his teachings, he simply discovered what is true. And so, whatever he teaches is easy to prove because it's all around us. And the good news, science today, whether be it natural sciences, be it um, social sciences, they've collected a lot of evidence for us. Meditation, for example. Science, medical science has proven that meditation actually alters our brain waves. It helps us with memory. It helps us feel happy. It helps us in so memorize, especially those of you who are students who need to take exams. It helps us to meditate. And now we have evidence. And the evidence can help us increase our faith. 
the Buddha says, you don't have to believe me, you can try it out yourself. And by trying out yourself, what does that mean? You're creating evidence so that we can have faith in our practice and we can continue and continue. Don't you all have faith? You must have had faith in order to be here, to give so much for a voluntary cause. Many people out there would think that, hmm, what a, what a unusual bunch of people. You're doing all this work getting no pay. No pay at all. And no sleep. <laughs> you have to make such big sacrifices of your time in such a competitive environment, a meritocratic society. What's wrong with you? But we have faith. It's because of our faith that we know this is going to lead us to our Buddha land. When we give and when we sacrifice, we can overcome a lot of adversities. We are building up our character. I often tell the young adults in Sydney that what they are doing is really personal development. And in and they don't even need to pay for it. You know how many hundreds and thousands of dollars you have to pay for those seminars, a one-day seminar? And all they do is they just teach you maybe how to think. You come here it, for a great cause, no money, you don't, and you still get free food. <laughs> and you get great friendships. Have faith. Faith of what? Faith that the Buddha is not out here. Where is the Buddha? In us. The Buddha is in us. But you know it takes a lot of faith to believe that. Isn't it? To believe that I can become a Buddha. That's why whenever Master is here, he says, he asks everybody to say, I am Louder, I am Buddha. Louder, I am Buddha. I need to have that faith, that confidence. When we give people confidence, I have to give people confidence in the Buddha that's in me. Now, what does it mean to say that I am Buddha? I am wise, I am compassionate, and I am happy. I'm enlightened. I'm no longer attached. Not so many strings attached. I am Buddha. So the next time I need to frown and feel worried, it's time to check in, take my one-minute break, my pause, and remind myself, I am Buddha. If I am Buddha, then ah, easy come, easy go. Let it go. Great. Thank you. Round of applause. <laughs> Birth in Buddha land, everyone. Number five. That's number five. Yes. The microphone, please. Right here. Here. Give me a number. Uh, 5.4, freedom. Continuously cultivate all varieties of meditative concentration. Wow, good. Thank you. Thank you. So, freedom to travel. Did you know that all heavenly beings, Tian Ren, one thing they must have is meditative concentration. So, if you want to be reborn in the heavenly lands, if you want to be reborn in pure land, Please start meditation now. Okay? You can start with the one minute that we did just now. That one minute I told you is first aid. It's also building up your confidence. Everybody, whenever we say meditation, usually tells me no time. Don't you even have one minute to spare? It's very rare. 
that people don't even have one minute to spare. When they say no time, they say no time for half an hour or 20 minutes or one hour of meditation. Okay, I can accept that. One minute. So please, next year, if and when I return, and I come back and ask, did you check in for the, for the past year? I hope everybody will say, yeah, you have already built up your check-in habits. Meditative concentration. Chan Ding. Two words. Chan. Chan consists of, this word Chan consists of Xin and Tan. Single-minded. Single-minded is Chan. When, so when we deal with the outside world, Chan, I can deal with it single-mindedly. That's Chan. So when I'm eating an apple, I single-mindedly eat that apple. When I, when I drink my water, I single-mindedly drink the water. It will taste very different. Let me assure you. That's why in Nantian Temple, we have tea chan. I don't know whether you have tea ceremonies, tea chan. Yeah, you do. So when you calm yourself down first and you sip your tea, it tastes so fragrant. Di, concentration. Ding, now, is inside of us. When we notice in our mind any perturbations, you know how we go through this sinusoidal curve every day, ups and downs inside of us? One moment we are happy, another moment we feel sad, another moment we feel jealousy, and then another moment we feel greed. When we go through these ups and downs in our life, thing tries to bring it down to a level of balance. So that instead of going up and down, we go smaller and smaller, and smaller and smaller. So that's thing. Knowing how to process all those thoughts, reactions, emotions in us. That's thing. It's not about not having any of these thoughts arise. I don't think that's possible. I often think of this mind as a broken down vending machine. Coke, 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 Coke. Sprite, 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 Sprite. All this trash <laughs> that's coming out of it, broken down, cannot stop. But it's not about the fact that all these thoughts come out. The thing is, what do you do? You keep drinking all this Coke that comes out? Or you just let it come and go? Come and go. Let it go. So thing is no second thought. It comes out. Let it go. Don't harbor any negative thoughts. You know, guo tang chi fan. If you if you join in any of our retreats, if we eat guo tang, what does it mean? Guo le jiu bu yao zai xiang le. That's guo tang. So after the meal, don't think about the great steamboat anymore. It's over. <laughs> so guo tang. So therefore. Unattachment, non-attachment. Isn't that what freedom means? Freedom means non-attachment. So meditative concentration, when we have meditation, that helps us to practice or develop the habit of non-attachment, allowing things to come and to go, to come and to go. This is very, very critical. Especially when we are facing the last moments of our lives. That's the time when a lot of memories come through. Whoops, I left my money in the bank somewhere. How much money do I have? Have I given this to so-and-so? Whoops, I've forgotten this. I've forgotten to say this to so-and-so. No, that's not the time. At our last moments, the most important thing is to nian for. And so what you pray very hard is all your good friends are around you and they nian for with you. And in order to do that, now is the time to go zhu nian when we can. You have to develop those positive affinities, right? 
So now go zhu nian. Later on, you will have the positive affinities of many, many good friends around us. But it still depends on us. You know, outside, not enough. I mean, outside, everybody, omi tofu, omi tofu, omi tofu, and then inside, oh, my money, my money, my money. No use. So I need meditative concentration to keep myself grounded. To understand the five desires, to understand all these things from the sense organs, don't attach. Ah, uh, cannot, cannot have it. If it's yours, it's yours. If it's not, it's not. Just let it go. And the understanding the cycle of birth and death. Just now we had one minute. In that one minute, did you feel that inner peace? So just think, how many of these one minutes, if you can just accumulate them, how helpful it will be. I have personally developed my habit that before I go to bed, I must meditate, no matter how tired, because it has allowed me to sleep with a lot more inner peace. And now, no matter how long the, the plane rides are, they don't bother me anymore. I can't sleep on the plane. This, this is a natural genetic makeup. Nothing I can do about it. However, what is helpful to me is that I can meditate. I can breathe. It's so beautiful, just enjoying my breath and being at ease with it. But where did that come from? That comes from the fact that I have been doing my minute meditations. Because wherever I go, I have to do my minute meditations. So thanks to you, I developed my habit again. So that those of, I know many of you travel a lot. So when you travel, just breathe. Check in to the plane. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Nothing better to do anyway. Rather than watching all, that, all the movies and all that, just breathe. It's so beautiful to be able to appreciate our breath and to be at peace. So that with all the air hostesses and, and passengers around you, they all look at you and say, wow, so peaceful. Ah, then you talk about, yeah, because I'm a Buddhist. <laughs> Isn't it? They look at the Buddha, they always say, so peaceful. Because that's what the Buddha is. So, thank you very much for freedom. I hope that um, you, have, you have an um, idea, a sense of what, of what it means to cultivate happiness. Now, we're going to leave 6 to 10 till later, till tomorrow. But... What we have done is that we have explored five keys to happiness. Five keys, that of beauty, of wealth, of harmony, of, um, what's number four? Sorry, what's number four? Freedom. That's number five, isn't it? Freedom is number five. Number Fourth four is, is rebirth to Buddha birth land. in the Buddha land. Thank you. I'm sleep deprived too. Birth in the Buddha land. So, now knowing all these as sources of happiness, we've also learned that in order to have these sources of happiness, we have to cultivate the causes and conditions. So it's always, you want an effect of happiness, you need the cause for it. So the cause, we've explored these five causes, for these causes, we need to have the conditions. And there are four conditions. If you want to know the full conditions, how is proper form attained? The Buddha says, anger ruins virtuous roots. So we must not have anger. We must not allow them to grow. Images of the Buddha are made with a kind and compassionate heart. So those of you who have um, patronized are patrons to various Buddha statues around in the shrine? Well, here you are on your way to proper form. And trust one's body and mind to great kindness and compassion. Love the Dharma, protect the Dharma, create Buddha images to be beheld by future generations so that others can venerate them. 
then one will obtain an elegant, proper appearance, which all sentient beings will delight in seeing. So all these are the different conditions for beauty. In addition, if you want a life of perfect wealth, give timely gifts without contempt or arrogance, do so joyfully with no expectation of reward, strive onwards in this manner in your constant cultivation. Therein wealth and noble status will be obtained. Sorry for the typo. Maintaining harmony, abandon divisive language and wrong views. So don't, you know, divisive language. Don't divide people. Don't say, don't go to A and say, hey, B is, B is going to, is going to do bad things to you. And then go to B and say, A is not going, A is going to hurt you. That's divisive language. We should try and bring people together instead. The true Dharma has yet to perish. It can still be protected. Lead sentient beings to abide in great enlightenment through the Dharma. When this is accomplished, everyone will be kept from destruction. Birth in the presence of a Buddha. Spread flowers and incense over Buddhas and stupas. Xiang hua ying, xiang hua qing. Do not harm others. Make Buddha images. Have deep faith in great enlightenment. And one will be born by transformation atop a lotus before a Buddha. Speaking of uh, being reborn on a lotus, this past year, last Christmas, I invited a Japanese artist to make and sew, she hand sewed for me, a huge lotus cushion. A very big lotus cushion, hand saw about 30 petals. And then I was running this lotus carnival. So those of you who saw me on my Facebook, we had, she designed a whole uh, marquee with all the beautiful beads and like a Zen garden. And right in the center was this lotus cushion. Why? Because I wanted to give an opportunity for every visitor to Nantian Temple to be able to sit, that was my dream, to sit on top of a lotus and take a selfie. <laughs> so, being reborn on top of a lotus. Why? Because lotus is a symbol of purity. If all of us can be reborn on top of a lotus. So if you come to see me in Nantian Temple, remind me to take out that lotus cushion for you so that you can sit on top of it and take your selfie. Travelling freely. When seeing others cultivate wholesomeness and speak the true dharma, do not hinder their efforts or criticise them. Offer bright lamps at Tathagata stupas, that's Buddha stupas, and temples, and your cultivation of meditation will bring you to Buddha lands. If you want to find out more details, the book has a lot more examples and stories. You know how the master is, it's a, he's really a great storyteller. So I, I can't, I'm not even one tenth of what is in the book, but at least today I hope that those of you who have managed to pick what you like, you will remember what you have picked. And for those of us who have heard it, that it has made an impression. And that you could put, put, choose at least one thing to work on from tonight. From all the things that tonight. If you can choose one thing that you want to practice, then your trip here has been very worthwhile. We'll look at the rest of the summary tomorrow, but here are your 10 keys to happiness. And the book, The Paths to Happiness, it's also on sale in the back. Now, back to my Buddha's birthday education project. To me, the spirit of Vesak is what lives on from year to year. This year, I understand here you have a beautiful, what, a guard, a, a, your garden was brought here to across, across the temple where you have these, um, what, four, the four bodhisattvas and just what gardens of flowers, just a major undertaking. That's our spirit of Vesak, the honor that we have given to the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas. Well, for me, we did something 
in Sydney as well. The Buddha Charita is the earliest known full-length biography of the Buddha, Fo So Xing Zan. And what I did was I told the story of the Buddha Charita to an artist, uh, really a cartoonist. He's a very well-known cartoonist in, in um, Sydney. And he then sketched the birth story, which is one chapter. So he sketched it and then sent it to his friend in Malaysia, who is the animator who developed the nine-minute Buddha cartoon, the life of Buddha cartoon from Malaysia three years ago, I believe. Jie Cheng Fa Si, he developed this cartoon. So the animator then digitally painted it. And we printed a three-meter-long um, painting of that zero. It was really marvelous and beautiful. Following that then, I invited several animators as well as musician, as well as a, um, um, a voiceover person to develop a video. Would you like to see it? This is all voluntary efforts, so I'm very grateful to them for, for being able to do this. It's available on my Buddhist Birthday Education Project website. That is this QR code here. And if you go there, under Art Projects, we have the Buddha Charita. That's the beautiful serial painting, three meters long. But I can't bring that here. So what I've done is I've brought this um, video. It's available on the website. But in case the... Wi-Fi is slow. I've also brought an original. So, can we have music? Can we have music, please? It comes with music. Buddha the Sun, king of the Sakya clan, he was anointed. This is the original the text. Okay, this is the His original text from. Maya, so the words here, the original text. From 2,000 years night, ago. Queen Maya dreamed of a huge elephant, white like Himalaya. Um, While well, this is happening, uh, we can start over. Yes. This is from 2,000 years ago, written by Mami Pusa Ashvagosha. Sudodana, which means of the kindred of the sun, king of the Sakya clan, he was anointed to stand at the head of Earth's monarchs. His queen, named Maya, meaning as if free from all deceit. One night, Queen Maya dreamed of a huge elephant, white like Himalaya. Armed with six tusks, and with his face perfumed with flowing ichor, he entered the womb of Queen Maya to destroy the evils of the world. Then one day, with the king's permission, the queen, having a great longing in her mind, went with a group of royal maidens into the garden at Lumbini Park. As she supported herself against the branch of a large tree, which was laden with beautiful flowers, the Bodhisattva suddenly came forth. With glory, fortitude and beauty he shone, like the young sun descended upon the earth. When he was gazed at, though of such surpassing brightness, he attracted all eyes, like the moon. Calmly, with the lotus sign in high relief, far striding, set down with a stamp, seven such firm footsteps did he then take. He who was like the constellations of the heavens. The great seer, Asita, 
in his search for the excellent law, came to the palace of the Sakya king and made these predictions. Having forsaken his kingdom, indifferent to all worldly objects, and having attained the highest truth by strenuous efforts, he will shine forth as a son of knowledge to destroy the darkness of illusion in the world. He will proclaim the way of deliverance to those afflicted with sorrow, entangled in objects of sense desire, and lost in the forest paths of worldly existence, as to travelers who have lost their way. At that time, just as in paradise, Mandarava flowers, lotuses and water lilies of gold and beryl cascaded from the sky, falling at the feet of the Sakya sage. At that moment, none gave way to anger. No one was ill or experienced any discomfort. None resorted to sinful ways or indulged in intoxication of mind. The world became tranquil, as though it had reached perfection. You think. What do you think? This is... Thank you. You know, every time I look at this video, I think of the greatness of the Buddha. I did this video because as a tribute to the Buddha, the Buddha is such a beautiful story. The Buddha's story is such a beautiful story. And I think of ourselves being on the Buddha project, isn't it? All of us. We start with the declaration of faith that I am Buddha, after which we walk the path of the Buddha, step by step. And we have friends with us. We need people with the same mission, the same shared values, the same understanding of what happiness is for us. We talk about the pursuit of happiness. There's such a movie. The pursuit of happiness. To most people outside, the pursuit of happiness is that of wealth, of travels, of maybe statuses, of the five C's. That's happiness to many people out there. But to us, the fact that we are here says that it's, that's not enough. We are looking for happiness inside of us, sustainable happiness, and that's enlightenment. We are looking for understanding reality as it really is, understanding the truth of why we are here, understanding the purpose of our lives, understanding that the purpose of our life is to give, and it's through sacrifices, it's through battling Mara. And it's through internet working and feeling the interdependence that our faith will grow and knowing that the Buddha land awaits us. That's our Buddha project. So this particular video, though very short, personally, I feel a lot for it. The colors are beautiful, the, the voice, the narration, and the text. I hope that you have an opportunity when you come to the website, share it. I'm very, actually very proud to announce that this particular website, paradeofthebuddhas.org, already has over a million visitors since its establishment three years ago, four years ago now. It's not easy for, for such a specialized website. And it comes from the fact that it has a lot of quality information. And this quality information is something you will find useful in your journey on your, your product, on your Buddha project, as well as in um, that you can share with friends. I have five more minutes. Does anybody have a, any pressing questions you'd like to ask?
Any pressing questions? This is your opportunity. Five minutes. Yes. Uh, good evening, Venerable. Yes. Uh, I do not have a question, but uh, I'd like to just share something that I heard over the radio a few days ago. I think uh, we are really blessed to come to this uh, talk tonight. Uh, the invited guest on that radio show was actually uh, a keynote speaker uh, for a forum, and the title of the forum is Wisdom 2.0. <laughs> And uh, the forum is actually attended by top business leaders, I, I believe they are from the region. And, uh, and, and she's actually uh, a Harvard uh, graduate with a Singapore government, on a Singapore government scholarship. So uh, she said that when she came back to Singapore, she led about uh, a 90 uh, senior and uh, junior teachers and uh, she said that after several years, on hindsight, she said that she could have done it better. Uh, and uh, she said that um, one way to cultivate wisdom is actually control our breathing. And uh, I believe that uh, all of us have enriched ourselves very much tonight. Uh, not, and and uh, this talk is free. So we are indeed very blessed. Thank you, Venerable. Thank you. We are indeed very blessed. Sometimes we forget to count our blessings and we take a lot of things for granted. So if every night when we go to bed, we check into our bed, right? We check into our bed and spend that one minute of feeling that deep sense of appreciation for all the conditions, we are all the more wiser. I think we are, we are really wisdom infinity at that moment. What I think many top leaders around the world are doing now is that like Google, search inside yourself. They are all recognizing the benefits of meditation. Many of the um, research has shown the importance of volunteerism, of gratitude. But What's different is our sense, what, what is different about Buddhism is about our sense of no self. This is what makes us very different from all the other secular aspects. Our recognition of impermanence, our recognition of interdependence helps us to grasp the moment to build conditions in the moment, which is what you have done to grasp the moment to come to this talk in spite of it being so late and it's a Friday night. We have our, thank Buddha, it's Friday. We have our Friday Dharma nights here in the temple. Just as we have check-in, now that I have only two minutes left, I would like, this I will go through tomorrow, I would like us to check out, shall we? So, Let's join palms. And this is our opportunity to check out from tonight. May palms in every world be joined in kindness, compassion, joy, and generosity. May all beings find security in friendship, peace, and loving care. May calm and mindful practice give rise to deep patience and equanimity. May we give rise to spacious hearts and humble thoughts of gratitude. May the merits of this evening's Dharma session be dedicated to all sentient beings so that they too may be happy, peaceful, and enlightened. Omitofo. Please rise as we thank Venerable Dr. Jerry for her very wonderful talk. Let us join palms and bow to the Venerable. Peace 
Thank you, brothers and sisters, for being here tonight. Before we leave, there are actually two announcements here. The first announcement is that tomorrow's Dharma talk will be at 8 p.m., but at level 2 conference room. Just to repeat, the Dharma talk is here tomorrow at 8 p.m., but at the level 2 conference room. The second announcement is that we hope that you will help us to keep the chairs because there will be a Dharma service. Uh, we will be preparing for the Dharma service on Sunday. Thank you again and good night. Most enlightened one